Hello, hello everybody. How are you doing? Welcome to Late Night Live and welcome to Tracy Creating. I am Tracy and throughout this video may you be inspired, learn something new or simply relax while you're watching. So just while we wait for people to come in, I'll just get my other screen ready. So I can see who comes in to say hello and any questions in the chat box. So perfect, that's ready. And yarn it out. Hello, hello, how are you going? Thanks so much for coming in. And So the plan for tonight is to do, hello Celine, how you doing? Um, we're going to do, I've got brown, I've got gold and I've got white. You're good, glad to hear it. All right. So I'm going to put my gloves on and check on my paints. But before we actually do get painting, I want to show you my balloon smashes from my one of my previous lives. Just want to check on this one first. When I first mixed it, it's a little bit lumpy. This is burnt umber from Montmartre, and I thought, ooh, let's let that sit for a moment and see if it blends in a little bit. See. That's not a bubble, that is a lump of paint. So I've been trying to squash it against the side of the cup and squash it in and blend it that way. So it looks like it's getting there, so that's good. A couple of extra little lumps there. So we'll let that sit just a little bit longer. This is the gold from Semco, which is the spotlight paint. And this is my spring brand white house paint. It's a low sheen interior acrylic from Bunnings. And all of my mixes are mixed with a combination of 10% Atelier pouring medium. Let me see, here it is. Looks like this. So 10% of that, along with, <clears throat> this is a big one. Oh, 90% of this, Flood Flow Troll, the Australian version. And I combine those two together and mix them up in a bottle like this. Okay, so then I mix approximately equal parts of the paint with equal parts of my pouring medium. And I add water if needed, depending on what type of technique I'm doing at the time. So, also, for something I haven't done in a little while, I've pulled out my acrylic wool ball, my new purple ball, seen as I retired what was left of my green one. So we will be using this tonight in our pour. Alrighty, so let's have a look at a couple of things. We'll start off with the painting. Looks like this. Absolutely stunning. I love it to bits. You can see some of the bumps. They're very slight from that balloon effect. See the gold in there. So this green that was created from the phthalo blue 
and the gold. Just beautiful. Pretty, thank you. So if you remember, when we did the balloon on these, we transferred it onto some photo paper, which I really wanted to show you how they turned out. So underneath my paintings is plastic. This is plastic. And you can see, you know, it's a bit beaten and battered. Must be time to freshen it up. Um, but when I was doing this, you can see that I was doing the whole balloon off the edge of the photo paper. And here. So down there is actually an acrylic skin. Let's flip it over. Can you see that? But it, this is very thin. So I was able to just pick up a corner of the photo paper and lift it all up with all that still attached. See, they look amazing too. I love them. <coughs> Excuse me, but I did four and I kept these ones together to show you the extra little skin and then I trimmed these ones. So I just trimmed along the edge of the card, the photo paper. And that's how they look once all the excess from that to that. So really happy with those. So you can see, still very flexible. And this is the, don't know if you can see that. Canon photo paper. These ones are just six by four inch, regular average size photos, I guess. So, All right. So I thought that would be be pretty cool to show you. Hello, Jelly Bean. How are you going? All right. So, yeah, I thought you'd appreciate seeing that and seeing how it turned out. So, oh, yeah, great job on the photo paper. Thank you very much. All right, so let's see how this brown's gone now. Give it another stir, another scrape. So sometimes if you find your paint has is a bit lumpy and it's not blending in very well, it's good to just let it sit and see how it goes. Um, and if possible, you could mix your paints in advance. So if you know that you're going to do an acrylic pour at night, if it's possible and if you have the time, you could mix the paint in the morning or, you know, sometime during the morning and just let it sit. Especially if it's hard to mix in because then the paint will relax and get mushy and blend in over that time as well. That's a lot smoother than it was before. You're really happy with that now. So what I wanted to do was grab a couple of other cups. All good there, awesome. And create 
Oh. Two other shades. So that's a bit of white in there and then just a dollop. So I don't have a measurement for that. Um, it was just tip the cup up, let a blob fall in and there we go. So now we mix it. This is just to create some different shades. Oh, that looks cool just like that. So. I like to use the side of the cup. I tend to put my cup on an angle and then lift it along the side and come down like that. So this paint now is a combination of house paint and the Montmartre acrylic paint. And that's a nice light shade. So now we have those three. I think we just might do some of the burnt umber. And then just a little bit of white. Get another stick. So now we have the white and the gold. Because that's still there. We can't see that anyway. Um, and three different shades of brown. So, let's see. Alright. Slightly turning and rotating that cup with my left left hand. So there we go. So I thought these three colours with the white, not so much the gold, but I really want to use the gold. Um, we'll create a kind of coffee blend. So, and now that I've mixed up all this paint, I don't know that I want to do string. Yeah, I will. But I'll do it differently. Okay, that's solved it. So I'll give my gold a shake. So this time round, we're going to just pour on the colours all over the place and then instead of doing string dip, we'll just then put the string on and then pull it across the surface. So it's gone, which seems to me more like a string pull, which is generally what people call it. So I won't be dipping it in the paints. Hence, string dip technique. Um, so, yeah, I will do a string pull. So, this one looks like a bit of a... Hmm, it's a little bit darker than a latte, maybe. No, that'd be latte. This one perhaps a is it a mocha chino? And this one would be if this were a frappe, it would be a coffee and chocolate mixed frappe. The white would be the cream on top. And this burnt umber would be the squiggle of chocolate topping across the top. Am I making anybody hungry? Sorry about that. <laughs> or, or considering having a coffee, because I, I would. So now just to add in some gold, 
I think those colors turned out pretty awesome. So, and just add that caramel topping for those who don't like the chocolate topping. And there we go. That's what it reminds me of. And these cups I will tip into each other. I'll upend them into each other and have a small painting with those as leftover paints. So that's cool. Right, so I need to tilt this because there's too much paint on there to just do a string pull. Whoa. That is a stunning. Really happy with the colors. So if you think about that, from a dark color, the burnt umber, with some white, <clears throat> I've created uh, two extra colors. And that looks awesome. Nope, I just like coffee. <laughs> I used to too. I used to only drink tea and then somebody offered to make me a coffee very late one night and you because know, I was working away into the wee hours of the morning and I was asked would you like a coffee and for some reason I was just like yeah sure and now I drink coffee leave it like that <laughs> no another day there could be some really great dips underneath here okay so I'll pull out some wool this is just like my green it's a very general eight ply acrylic wool that I need new scissors to cut with and get that out of the way. Terry is here. What are we painting tonight? We are painting on an 8 by 10 canvas with a chocolate, no not chocolate, coffee inspired colours. Am I going to do some string pull? See, the thing that I'm doing different here, um, I'm not going to dip this in paint before I start. Although, good point, I am going to moisten, moisten, moisten the string in white before I start just to have it absorb some paint and then I will scrape it so just putting it so I am dipping it um, so string dip technique is generally where you've dipped the wool the string into the paints before you start um, but because with this one what I thought is I'll squiggle all the paints over the top, then lay the string upon it. So I'll do this there. Now I'm going to use my thumb and forefinger and squeeze out the white paint. So that way the wool has had, already had some paint on it and absorbed some of that moisture um, but this time we're not dipping although I just did um, we're just going to lay the string upon the paint here on the canvas so effectively that is more of a string pull than a string dip so oh yummy colors I know right and thank you Resin Heaven Studios, how are you going, Sue? Just 
just dropped in to say hi. So hi. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for popping in. Hope you're doing well. And so now to, I don't know that I want to do flowers, but I think I'll just do lay it down in different ways and pull it. No rhyme, reason, just relaxed, painting, fun. So just tapping it in. So I think I would like to go from this top section and just do a little bit of movement. I'm not even going to bother about squeezing off the string. I'm just going to leave it like that with the paint on there. All I did was tap it off on the table like that and then we'll come back in and do another maybe a taller sweeping motion there. So, oh good you're off to work. Have a great shift. Hope it goes well. Looks pretty so far. Thank you. Bye. And another one this way. Oh, that's pretty. I think we'll do a big Big open one here. I don't like that one. Let's break it up a little bit by doing this. There we go. Now you can see all these reactions happening over here. I think, I believe a lot of that is due to the house paint and the Floetrol. I don't necessarily want this to be a directional piece either. So I'm going to go in the center there and break that up across the bottom. I'll go this way where I just dripped and across there. Drop it off on the table and do Across this section here Ooh, I've got to watch the tail of the string and I just dripped again so I will utilize that. There's a lot of paint right there. I do want to do something in here. Just capturing that bit of gold. go. I do believe I am finished. That's really fun. Have you got glitter in your paints? No glitter in here Kerry. Um, just the paints and my pouring medium mix. So the 10% Atelier pouring medium and the 90% Floetrol mix. Oh. All right. That looks cool. I'm really happy with that. And I would 
definitely have that. Oh, so nice. In the background of a coffee, coffee area. Absolutely stunning. Thank you. Gorgeous. Thanks, Kerry. So I do like the reactions. Some of them take over. But some of them are still very subtle. You've got the combinations of the coffee colours. The darker blends. The lighter blends. Oh, that squeaky. Squeaky arm. Yeah, so there we go. All right. I was looking at one of these sections, thinking it needs to be pulled off. It needs to be broken up. And something about that gold but I don't know let's go this way definitely I really <laughs> want this covered in different directions there we go Fantastic. I think it was the reactions that you could see. Oh, yeah. Understandable. All right. So we're going to come down. We'll have a close up before we sign off. So a nice quick video for you tonight. And so in the beginning of the video, I showed the dried results of the balloon smash from a few lives ago. And how they looked when I peeled them up off the plastic and how they look trimmed up around the photo papers. All right. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming in, saying hi or just watching. That is awesome. Get up nice and close and see some of those colours. So this was the brown. The burnt umber, I should say, the white and the gold. And with that burnt umber and white, we created two different shades. And now with the blending of the techniques, it looks awesome. I love it. So, let's stay focus there alrighty wow cool <laughs> thanks Celine we'll go back and watch from the beginning thank you Kerry that would be lovely I really appreciate that so there we have it you guys are amazing thanks so much for being here and make sure I've got everything yes 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 Alrighty, so signing off, if you have to go anywhere, please take care and wash your hands, wear a mask, all of that. And I would love to see you back here again. So that would be wonderful. And from myself, always, I like to say, be kind, be creative and be fabulous. Bye.